Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening. Hopefully tonight we're actually going to fix this wing finally and for the final time and not actually have to do it again. Six packs of Kelly. Good evening. Welcome to the studio. Nice to see you this evening. Um, as long as you, certainly on this stream, as long as you stay away from <coughs> certain subjects, which is generally politics, religion, and extremely sexual content, then um, you can express an opinion, but um, as long as you're polite about it. But in any case, good evening to everybody. We'll see if my camera behaves itself a bit better tonight. I think this camera doesn't like the blue non-slip mat for some reason. I know the camera is kind of blue sensitive. I noted that uh, some time ago. Um, so it might, for some reason it seems to uh, got all sort of loosey synchronization if I just uh, show it uh, the blue mat on its own. Um, let's move this a little bit more around so I don't get as much stuff on the floor. Well, I know mine is, so uh, don't know who you're talking about, but uh, if I compare my work to some of the premier artists around the place, then mine is definitely poor, <laughs> to say the least. Mm. Right, last night, last thing last night, I discovered I completely carved this arm in the completely the wrong place. Which is what the pencil mark is there, that's where it should be, and where it isn't, and that's where I want it to be. So I have now got to um, uh, put it in place and then carve the wing lower again around it to... To fix it, to fix the positioning, which I'm kind of a bit annoyed that I made that mistake. I don't know how I did it, but I have managed to do it. So what I'm doing now is take my gouge because my gouge will create a uh, a nice smooth transition into the arm. And then we'll work from that line. The Danish guy. Yeah, he's a bit... Um, I suspect he's a bit sensitive to um, to that. I wouldn't say his work is mediocre, though again I haven't seen a lot of leather artists. He seems to um, do quite well, to be honest. In terms of what he does, but uh, as I say, I'm not a leather worker, so I can't actually attest in any way to uh, to the quality of his work. But um, there's lots of people that wouldn't particularly enjoy being told, uh, hey, I think what you're doing is not very good. <laughs> uh, if I go and do something silly. Okay. Well, 
Well, I mean, there's all sorts of uh, things said about that in uh, in some respects. You know, there's people who will say things like, if you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. Um, there's other people that says, if you don't like what you're watching, go watch something else. Um, and to some extent, it potentially depends on how it's said. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, get very sensitive if Saxon191 thank you very much for following that was a bit weird Saxon191 thank you very much for following the studio by the way sorry the way that appeared on screen and the length of time was rather odd. Normally you should get the um, the airbrush graphic and then your name is, is revealed. This time it did it revealed your name, then did the graphic and then revealed your name. I wonder if that's going to happen again. But we shall see. Thank you very much anyway <laughs> for testing out my follow <laughs> um, and for... Uh, for following the studio that is most uh, most fantastic i do appreciate it thank you very much now then yeah some people don't like criticism at all some don't mind constructive criticism uh, and some people will just go meh if you try and say anything about it about them but I will for example uh, suggest that you be polite about it if you try and tell it to me Because kind of my opinion is there's no point in being rude about it to uh, to somebody if you if you're polite then um, fair enough as you say it's an opinion it is indeed uh, especially because I haven't carved the edges yet but you're right it is. <laughs> You see, at that point, it, 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 it allows for discussion. You know, along the lines of, well, you know, how would you suggest that I fix it then? If, uh, if there's some part of it that you think is, uh, is particularly rough. And then we can have a discussion. I mean, at this stage anyway the whole the whole thing is kind of rough it's not um, it's not at a stage that I would say is anywhere near a finished carve um, fairly obviously this wing is completely uh, uh, completely rough at the moment um, this one is terrible because I just keep making mistakes with um, with you know, the first the first set of mistake I made with this was to forget that the bone is proud. Then then I made the mistake of forgetting that the bone has to join the body at a at a particular position, more or less. If you imagine this was your shoulder, you, your arm sort of joins straight into your back. It doesn't have a crease. And then the third mistake was putting the arm in completely the wrong position. It was down here. So I'm kind of surprised it's as good as it is at the moment. D 
uh, I'm having to again carve carve further down into into the piece and then um, lower this whole this whole wing down again a little bit further down into the wood but that is the advantage of me the way I was I started this which was very tentatively carving uh, defining the shapes at the higher level rather than block carving down to a level that I want it to like these these are block carved down to a, to a level uh, if I'd have done that with the wing and then messed up I'd have had nowhere to go so at least um, starting at the higher level creating the shape and then working you know keep that shape but then lower it down into the wood to, to get to my final level allowed me to uh, you know to see the mistakes fix them without uh, without completely ruining the uh, ruining the piece and having to start completely again and uh, no, I still have to go deeper will this because I've still got I still got a groove there across the uh, across the arm bone I'm not quite sure whether to leave the rest of the wing where it is at the moment. Benta Violet, that's okay. Thank you for uh, for apologising. <laughs> that's quite all right. And good evening. Welcome to the stream. I trust everybody is well this evening. I hopefully am feeling a little bit brighter tonight. I was a bit tired yesterday and it probably turned out to be a bit of a quiet stream. Uh, I tend to I tend to go quiet when I get tired. Not that I'm ever sort of leaping around the room particularly but um, uh, my uh, my concentration sort of tends to focus more on what I'm doing than uh, than the words coming out of my mouth. The grain at this particular wood, somewhere around here, changes direction and I keep coming to a stop. Uh, which is which is a little bit awkward because I'm trying to turn the corner here. Because um, and I'm also doing taking advantage of the fact that I'm fixing a mistake with the wing position. I'm trying to actually integrate the the weight the the arm bone better and and the skin basically, which is the membrane or the skin, better into the body by by creating a curve. But the fact that the um, the grain is changing position and stopping stopping the chisel is um, making it a little bit awkward. So when you when <laughs> if you carve. And, and yeah, I'm not putting a lot of force into this because I don't need to and the, the wood itself is soft enough. If you find your chisel comes to a stop, doesn't want to move, generally speaking there's a reason for it. Uh, and the reason often is is to do with, with the grain of the wood. It's going in a different direction and you know what the wood is effectively doing is saying to you, hey, you know, you might actually not want to do what you're doing. And it's usually a good idea to at least listen to it. Sometimes you have to say, say, well, you know what? Don't care what you're telling me. I'm going to do it anyway. Just because it's it's basically not possible to do anything different. But um, it's, it's usually a good idea at least to check out what it's saying to you. Uh, and see whether there's uh, anything that uh, you can do. Am I going to paint this when I finish carving? I actually don't know the answer to that. I've had two suggestions. One is, um, actually I think both came from 3D block, but one is to actually airbrush it, which I probably could do. Um, 
that's not so bad it's a small enough shape in this area if i put some sort of protection down uh to probably airbrush it i can use my small compressor behind me the um the air pipes are long enough for that uh, and there's not a lot, there's not a lot of paint will go all over the place in order to to need the extractor fan, so I possibly could do that. And given that this is a white dragon, <laughs> blue sky, um, you know maybe I could do that. Uh, the other the other thing though that's been suggested is I could use use some pyrography on it, and um, yeah. I hesitate to say burn the wood because pyrography doesn't burn the wood, but you know, colour it using pyrographic techniques, uh, which is which is another possibility. So yeah, we may well do that. May well do that. Pentaviolet, thank you very much for following. Now I'm not getting sound, and the sound comes afterwards. Something is really weird going on tonight. Um. I don't think I'm gonna. Uh, I think my PC probably could do with a re reboot after after this thing tonight. Or how are we doing on memory? I wonder. I've already had. Um, I've already had my camera die on me tonight. The microphone, the the digital to analog converter died on me, for the uh, for the microphone and to be restarted. Uh, Twitch kicked me out and had to log back in again. Uh, I'm only using four gigs of memory, that's not much. Processors are running a bit, a bit high, but mm, don't especially see anything. Let's just get rid of a couple of Windows. That aren't doing a great deal for me at the moment. See if it makes any difference. Generally speaking, I have about 30 windows up most of the time, but. Uh, Pyrography would look nice, especially. Yeah. It, it's a medium sort of. Uh, Color wood really, um, in that respect. There are, you know, uh, I've got for for pyrography. I'll generally use a, use a whiter wood. You know, that that's at least sort of a, a fair difference in in color difference. So yeah, you, know, you can start to see this as a darker wood now. It's a lightish wood. And um, I think that's it. Yeah, and I've got some yeah, some real white wood here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a popular. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's easily possible to do pyrography on that. That's not uh, not an issue at all. Because uh, you, uh, I can do it on. I've done it on darker wood before now, so you know that's uh, seriously dark wood. Um. But yeah, it, well, to add sort of some shading into it would probably be a good idea for the for those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was carving that deeper again because to try and get rid of carve the uh, carve away the The groove that's in the uh, in the wing bone in the wing bone there. Yep, that's one reason why you use um, you tend to use stones with some sort of lubricant. Uh, either water. Depending on the stone, either water or oil is often used as a, a lubricant, and then you, as you say, you create that slurry, which it, which helps polish the blade. These particular blades that I'm using here don't uh, well. The manufacturer uh, 
recommends that most of the time you don't actually use a um, a stone on them. They don't need the, uh, you know the stones are relatively aggressive, as you've probably seen me do. I effectively just polish them, uh, which is enough to restore quite a quite a, a sharp edge on them most of the time. On the other hand, the other tools that I've got, which um, I've talked about before, uh, could uh, <laughs> I don't know about needing a uh, a whetstone. <laughs> they they probably need more like an angle grinder <laughs> to sharpen them. And this wants a bit more of a sharpen as well. For anybody who's watching, that, you know, uh, you'll see me sharpen blades frequently. Uh, sometimes maybe five, ten minutes. Uh, it's not that they're blunt as such. I mean, this, this blade isn't blunt by any means, but it's um, it's just missing a very sharp edge that you sometimes need. Depending on what I'm carving, if I'm sort of shaving wood, as I'm kind of doing around here, then you kind of really need the blades to be at their sharpest. And so uh, this is just a polishing compound more than anything else. Uh, I shouldn't really do this on top of here, uh, just mainly because the purple will come off. But... So this is uh, this is a leather strop, but it does it does bring material off the blade. I mean, you can see the dark, uh, and in certain lights you'll see it reflecting, which is the metal that it's it's polished off. In fact, we're possibly getting to the point of maybe needing to replace this. I've got another leather strop anyway, so. I'm not it's not something that particularly bothers me, but this is kind of getting loaded up a bit now, and um, you you won't see it, but the the cutting edge of this blade, just as you're using it, gets minor scratches on it, and now it's it's polished flat. Those minor scratches have gone away, and the edge, uh, which has got a slightly increased bevel on it. Is uh, is looking quite good. I c just in in rocking it here in the light, I can see the edge. And uh, what I'm what I'm, I can't you know physically, and especially since I need glasses, I can't actually see the edge. But what I'm seeing is the light reflecting off of it. And I can do things like rock it like just side to side. And you can actually on the camera, you can just see that very tip edge there, picking up the light from the overhead light that I've got on and what I really am doing is and look you know, one of the things I look for is the fact that that is it as I rock it across it doesn't change width in in this direction because that would tell me the blade isn't quite level across uh, which possibly means it just needs a little bit more polishing um, that's all but um, and that's just holding it at, at that angle, the angle of that um, that cutting bevel, and just dragging it backwards. It's a flat blade, so it's fairly it is fairly easy to do with a flat blade. It's just a matter of holding it still. It's not fantastically. You don't need to be fantastically accurate to it because first out the leather is slightly flexible. So if you're a little, tiny bit off and you you are applying a a light pressure, shall we say, uh, it will. The leather will conform to the blade, but whatever, however you do this, uh, what you'll get is you'll get a bevel forming on the end. It'll curl up slightly, and um, you know, in some cases it's possible to feel it. It's a very slight bevel, but it is enough to make the blade feel a bit blunt. So, generally speaking, you just drag it, turn it over, and drag it backwards a couple of times, and that bevel that's been created on the edge straightens out, and you get a really sharp edge then. So I shall just put that block to one side. I assume you're referring to the uh, to the sharpening block or the clear the polishing block there. And now I can 
literally is it's a bit like shaving with a with a razor now i can take really fine layer uh, you know this is this is the difference it's made i can take really and then you, you can see these just on the edge there now that helps when especially if you're in an area where the the grain isn't being particularly friendly to you as I said like here it keeps stopping when you're trying to carve it the sharper the blade the easier it is to to work in those areas now we're getting but essentially if you if you're getting you know the wood is saying to you hey then you really want to be sort of changing direction now only just got enough room on this side here to get in at the right angle uh, but uh, you know the, the the wood seriously likes me working this in this direction um, I know that's kind of anthropomorphizing you know wood doesn't like or dislike you it's just uh, yeah, it's just wood but um, it's kind of the easiest way to describe the effect you know instead of it because uh, when I look at this now and and you can't actually let's see if I can show you see if this can will zoom in hey it will that's amazing uh, I'm not sure you can see it though um, I know that's slightly out of focus let's see if I can focus that in a little bit better Okay, have a go yourself, camera. No, you're not doing any better than I did. Okay, uh, you can't. Fortunately, you can't see it. But what I can see here is a little bit of the wood I carved this way. It has now gone darker. It's actually gone dark and shiny, basically. Carving the wrong way is kind of like roughed up the feathers. <laughs> Want a better description? Or you know, rubbing a cat backwards. You've roughed up the um, the grain, the feathers, the hair, whatever however you want to describe it, and it tends to go white or lighter. If you do it in the right direction, it gets really smooth and shiny, uh, which is you know a very good indication of which is the right way. Uh, and I can see that quite clearly here on the bit that I did just this way. It's gone really shiny, and uh, you know that's that's another indication of when uh, when you're carving it in in the right or the wrong direction because sometimes <laughs> as I say you can't always do what it wants just because you just can't physically get in there um, what I'm thinking about the moment is whether uh, well, I probably I think I need to carve this the the arm down a little bit further because it's it's still I've still got that ridge there from where I cut it wrongly before. Um, what I'm thinking about is whether I need to take the rest of the arm and wing down a little bit, or whether you know that's it's kind of reaching backwards a bit. If you see, if you sort of can envis envisage it. Um, and therefore, you know, the fact that the that it's coming upwards at this side, if you're kind of reaching backwards. Now, I don't know if you've seen birds land sometimes, um, they get their wing, wings right back uh, to uh, to come into land. And uh, perhaps, he's, uh, perhaps he's doing that. I'm being a, I am being really tentative in carving this. I'm, you know, I'm shaping bits that I, I wouldn't normally shape if I was more confident in carving it. I am uh, 
putting in more detail than I really ought to at this stage. But having made so many mistakes, um, I'm kind of doing that so that I can see I'm on the right direction and then I, hopefully I don't make them you know, continue to make the mistakes. Actually, no. I'll tell you what, guys, um, since you, you've got a different view at the moment, you've got a really close up view of what I'm looking, what I'm doing here. Do you prefer that for a while or would you like the wide angle shot back? This particular, as I mentioned earlier, this particular bit of the wood just around here is really, is resisting me. And again, it's not actively doing that. It's a bit of wood, but you know, it's 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 easier to talk in those terms and uh, and and sort of get a feel for what's happening. I mean, everything I say about it, you know, it resisting me. It's being awkward. It's talking back to me, of course. Um, I'm not actually going cuckoo, um, but it's, um, it's the easiest way to describe the fact that you know what I'm doing to the wood is um, is not the right way to go about doing it. Now U shaped gouges like this, especially this is quite a uh, this is quite a pronounced U, are usually used for just you know hogging out lots of wood. They're nice and deep for that purpose. And you know, the final carving, if you're using U shaped gouges, you probably start getting more towards the wider ones uh, for doing that sort of work. And that's where you know I was using some of these wider ones to get the background down. And I'd probably start to use them in some of the wing areas around here rather than a flat chisel. The flat chisel is kind of, uh, is less flexible in a way, <laughs> despite the fact that these are called flex tools. Um, just because they, you know, you've got cutting angles or cutting edges on all, you know, 270 degrees, both sides and the bottom, uh, flat on the sides and then um, rounded on the bottom. Um, it's spoon shaped so you can dig in and come out which you can't do with a flat chisel if you dig in you can't come out you're stuck it's I'm exaggerating slightly because it depends on the angle but essentially yeah with with a flat chisel you 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 go in straight lines it's really hard to come out uh, of the wood uh, if you dig it in with a flat chisel So the U-shaped gouges are, uh, are some of the most versatile. And all the different profiles and lengths and sizes of them just, uh, just increase that. 3D Block, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. And how are you feeling today, sir? Are you going to have another chill evening watching me carve or do you think you might uh, fire your own camera up this evening? Uh, sounds like 3D Block may well be having um, 
problems watching me this evening. Which means he's probably at this point watching adverts. He has um, just hosted me now. He usually does that when he's got problems watching me. Because uh, Twitch, I think Twitch is um, having some issues tonight. Okay, that's good. Glad that you'll be doing. So, what is it? Is it Horace or is it a new piece or something abstract tonight? Horace, for anybody who doesn't know, is uh, just a nickname for the xenomorph that uh, 3D Block is doing in uh, monochrome, white on black. I'm working on fixing my mistake on this uh, on this arm. Yeah, I don't know. I know. I know. The as soon as I started up after uh, start screen, after about uh, ten seconds, it kicked me out. And to start again, yeah, you know, start again. It, it took about thirty seconds to reconnect. But timings are out as well on on a lot of the alerts. Now some of that. Um, I think is obviously is Twitch alerts, but um, I think some of it's got to do with the Twitch API. pieces that I've just kicked up there. I don't want to use the square the flat chisel to uh, to cut them out because it'll just create um a cut in the side and I want a, I want a smooth transition from uh, into into the arm bone. So I need to kind of avoid using the flat chisel too close to the arm bone. The problem I've got now is the head's actually in my way to carve in this direction, despite the spoon shape on the uh, on this chisel. The fact that the head's there is uh, I'm knocking against it, which is is limiting just exactly how I can carve from this side, which is the right direction for this bit of the wood. Oh, new abstracts. That sounds good. <laughs> to be honest, um, six packs of Cali. Your best answer to that is probably to uh, drop him a private message and ask him. And if he um, 
If he tells you, all well and good. If he doesn't, then move on to another streamer. You know, um, or um, or watch without chatting. It's not worth getting particularly. Um, <laughs> not worth particularly getting you know upset over it to be honest. I think the easiest way is just to put it down to saying, um, you know, it's an ego. I mean, it, to be honest, if you did say it looks mediocre just like that, that kind of is offensive, to be honest. You know, if you say something like to somebody like, I've seen you do better, which is kind of saying the same thing, but he's a little bit more polite. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, why was he streaming till four a.m.? I guess he enjoyed what he was doing. I mean, some people stream twenty-four hours, don't they? So. Right, we are gradually fixing this arm. And it's getting warm in the studio. <clears throat> I can have computers on all day, but as soon as I close the curtain, it starts getting warm in here. Uh... <laughs> pop, pop the chat out uh, free from mine, and then pop it out from yours and minimise it. And that way, then you don't get um, confused. Actually, that's assuming you can do that on your browser. I'm not sure. I'm not, uh, unfor well, fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not a Mac aficionado. I almost bought one once to do some... Um, iOS programming but never got around to it and I don't particularly have the need to do it anymore I don't only got one of the little minis or something like that though if I had done that now then do I want to bring the arm up no I don't think so we'll leave it where it is for the moment now then I'll be careful carving this I kind of like where this is at the moment, um, but the wing membrane sort of has to be flat, or at least it, it you know, the finger bone is going to come down here, and so from this knuckle, which is about there to across here, will be fairly tight. And indeed, if I look at my uh, reference picture. Yeah, sort of. 
Yeah, kind of across there. It's umbrella like though, so it's kind of curving a bit, but um Uh maybe I should next stream I should switch uh, uh, switch back to um uh one of the European um ingest servers. I'm ingesting into London again. I like to I like to do that one uh, and then make a stream full size. So I'm kind of used to popping them out these days, because then I can see the I can make the stream full size on a window, and just pop the chat over the top of it. Uh, would I get a lot? Of, uh, and they, you know, uh, maybe for about ten seconds until somebody reported you and uh, and Twitch um, banned you. <laughs> Unfortunately, they well, fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, um, they are somewhat hot and things like that. Right, so bearing in mind, I'm coming more or less a straight line from about here to here and then curve it slightly. And then it's going to go from a tight sort of from the arm bone as well. I've got to sort of do a quite a complex shape around here. All whilst working <laughs> with a grain angle I don't like. Actually, I can probably do this one for the other side, but one thing I don't like doing is carving off the edge of a piece like this, because then you've got you've got the chance of of actually pushing wood off the edge rather than cutting it. You just push it off the edge, uh, and it creates a really rough edge. And it's an edge I want to keep because it's um, you might you may or may not see it, but it's like rough bits now. Coming off the edge there, it's because I'm pushing, actually pushing wood fibres over the edge rather than cutting them. They're being pushed. Almost always you try and carve in from an edge. Again, sometimes not possible. Or sometimes just not advisable. But um, if you can, it helps to keep a sharp, you know, a clean edge. I have ah, forgotten you're using that, yes, yeah, so you, uh, you're not missing as much as I thought you were missing. try cutting that I'm gonna cut into an area that I don't want because I want to try and keep a fairly clean edge just against the skin against the body here Again, as before, I don't want any sort of uh, black lines uh, just right up against this edge. It's a, it's a fairly clean join to the body. 
Oops, um, looking at it, uh, it's sort of rounded, so I'm going to try and you know just keep a a smooth transition. I'm getting back into looking. It's um, observation of your reference is an important skill, which I'm not very good at. And it is an important skill to learn if you whatever references you're using whether you're using photographs uh, using live action models of some kind uh, whether you you're using your own imagination as a reference uh, it's you know the um, observation of any of those references is uh, is a key part of being able to put put down on on the medium, whatever it is you 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 know you're looking at. And it's why you know if if you're doing any sort if you have any sort of aptitude for drawing, as well as uh, another art form or craft. It's it's well worth doing it, even if it's only sort of stickmen type of idea, really rough, because it gets you know it, it gets you used to looking at something and seeing the details that are going to be important to you. Because quite often, what you're trying to get is not not necessarily well, it's not necessarily a perfect representation; it's an interpretation. And with with uh, you know, let's say for example, my punch graft, I can't represent every detail, so I have to pick carefully uh, what what I will try and represent and what I won't. And that so being able to study it and see what what makes it look like what it looks like is a is part of it. Now, this is feeling a little bit in this area here. I could do something really. Sharp, so I'm going to uh, just just this area right in the corner here. It's really awkward, um, but I really need this this sort of sharp U. So I'm just um, sharpening this one. This is harder to sharpen than the um, the flat chisels. Because it's you that you know the, the cutting edge is all the way around the U. So what I have to do is hold it at the correct angle, but rotate it while dragging it backwards. <laughs> so you're making a um, the, at least two, if not three-dimensional movements you know, with it. Because it is important that the sides are kept sharp as well. Uh, given that it's a gouge, the intention, of course, is that they you're going to dig it into the wood, and then go across. So you don't want only the bottom to be sharp. You need the sh the sides so that it cuts the cuts the U all the way around um, as, as it's working. It's not fantastically hard once you get the hang of it to rotate this whilst you're um, you're dragging it. It is kind of hard to drag it in a straight line. <laughs> That's a bit of practice. But all I'm doing is holding holding the chisel like that, do it like this, and just using my fingers, both these these on the side and these two here, just to twist the uh, twist the chisel as I'm just dragging it backwards. So essentially just doing that with it, but whilst I'm pulling it backwards. Right, and then I have to turn it over and drag it over one of the profiles to remove that slight inner burr. Now let's see if that has made any difference whatsoever. Yeah, it does.
carving round corners is sometimes quite challenging. <laughs> You'd think I'd learn, wouldn't you, not to actually blow the piece clean. At least not, not here. If I was in an outside workshop, maybe. But here in the studio, these bits would go everywhere if I did that. And I'd probably spend a week finding them all over the place. slightly slight miscut there but it's not too bad I just see if I can take the edge away So it's kind of kind of interesting because there's no muscles in the wing so I'm guessing really because there's I can't see any muscles or tendons in the reference image uh, that I'm using now I know this is to totally fictitious but I'm just trying to think of bats and you kind of don't see them in bats either you know, under, under the wing membrane so I'm kind of wondering if what happens is um, just air pressure opens, you know, causes the membranes to spread to an optimum position, and so the the finger bones are just like ribs that you uh, ribs of a wing, if you like. They just hold a shape more than anything. Okay, fair enough, Reedy. Now, before I go any further, doing something silly like that, I'm going to switch back to my U shaped tool. Because it allows me to go around the corner a lot better than I can with a flat one. Now, I want this bone to be a little bit more thinner just at this section here you be careful driving off the edge of here I don't want to jam it into the neck and I can't unfortunately get in from the other side at least not at this stage. Maybe once I've carved the the neck down a little bit and head down a bit more, I may be able to get back in here from the other side. Just a little bit. Doesn't quite 
just right in there there's a, there's a uh, it's not quite lining joining up with the uh, with the neck and, and shoulders properly there was kind of like a slight space that you just wouldn't get on an on an animal See what I could do now, of course, is I could tease my wife by um, just making comments about her birthday present, because I know she's upstairs at the moment. Eighty Fall Guy, good evening. Welcome to the stream. You're kicking back and chilling out. I trust you enjoyed your pizza, sir. I had one the other night. Twelve inches of pizza, pepperoni, and pepper. Uh, Jalapeno peppers and capers and olives. And now everybody else on the stream is um, craving a pizza. Yes, indeed I was. <laughs> I missed the first 15 minutes of you um, opening the silver. Um, but that was uh, that was all. And... Uh, I couldn't actually say hello because I was on the iPad and um, sometimes it doesn't connect to the chat. And it's either sort of drop, you know, come out and restart the the Twitch app and hope it reconnects or just sort of go, oh well. So I was I was busy trying to decide whether to actually reconnect it and tell you that you were you'd forgotten to um, to close the black rings. When you realised, <laughs> I've got some cream buns for after the stream, or so I'm told anyway. Cream buns and another some donuts. I don't actually, actually I don't have to know of ice cream. I prefer the um, the mint yogurt that you get with Indian uh, the uh, poppadoms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was thinking. Uh, well, I tried typing it anyway, and it didn't go through, uh, obviously. And then I thought well, I could restart the stream. I was just about to to restart the stream, and and you realise. So uh, then I just watched the rest of it, as you gathered. So, thank you for the advert, by the way. <laughs> of course, I can't remember whether you monitor who actually joins your uh, stream anyway, so you possibly knew I was there. I was trying to work out whether the person you were talking to at the start was actually trying to troll you or not <laughs> at first. Right, that's a better fit, and I'm going to scoop. I'm going to scoop the body down a little bit more anyway, so that will better curve into it. Uh, this wing membrane isn't isn't right yet, but we are. We now have. I've, so no, I didn't do any more. By the way. Um, I, I did stop. I just spent more time talking about it last night. Um, the wing membrane's a bit high because I've got a dip in here, and of course you just you don't have that. It comes off the bone in a smooth transition. I think I'm going to leave this hand as it is up here. Okay, so he's reaching back a bit, but you know what? He could be about to leap off, he, and he's going. You know, he's pulling his wings back for the back, the first downstroke. Could have just landed that way with the uh, the wings back as an air brake, so I'm leaving it. 
If nothing else, it leaves me a bit more wood in case I make another silly mistake. And of course the grain disappears down here. So if I carve this way, not only will the chisel try and drop in, it will actually start trying to rip the wood. I don't have a lot of space. I'm going to have to carve sort of cross grain. Sort of. Wood isn't so bad. It, you, you, if wood's going like this, you can cut wood's going in, you know, in like turn that way if you like. If you, wood's going in that way, you can carve into it like this, and you can carve across it. You try and avoid coming in this way because it just you, your chisel tries to follow it down into the wood, and that's when you rip things off. Uh, probably, I guess, because it didn't. Yeah, uh, the viewer list, I think, tells you who's in chat, and uh, I don't think I connect it to chat. Anybody who's uh, not familiar with Eddie Fall Guy, there, uh, Eddie makes uh, chain mail jewellery. Uh, chain chainmail, if you're not particularly familiar with it, is essentially ring metal rings, uh, which are then joined in various configurations to each other, forming some quite beautiful shapes sometimes, and actually amazing shapes when you look at them, and wonder how on earth they do it. The magic of rings, uh, and Eddie then turns these shapes into. Uh, Bracelets, keychains, key fobs, um, necklaces, anklets, uh, rings, anything you can think of really. Um, bags, small bags, you know, like um, maybe a small purse type bag or a dice bag, that sort of thing. Some really amazing shapes. So. I highly recommend the next time he does that, um, you check him out. He also streams games as well, but I watch the chain mail stuff. Uh, okay. Actually, I, I haven't seen. <laughs> I haven't actually ever seen you stream a game, AD. <laughs> You've always been um, probably uh, doing something else at the time. A ridge I'm just trying to get rid of. Okay. Tell you what, let's change the view for a little while. It's it's on ex quite a close up here. I mean, if you guys prefer the close up, please let me know. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a wider shot for a while, so you can see the overall dragon. I won't go too uh, too far back. Just give you a little bit more of a different view for a while. Now I know this next bone wants to come fairly close down here so I don't really want to start cutting into where that bone's going to be again. I want to try and um, yeah, the bone is going to be proud of the surface. Stand proud of the surface that is. Uh, rather than being proud of the surface. Oh, can, hmm, anyway, English language, funny with words. Uh, yeah, um, two meanings to being to a bone being proud of the surface okay. 
that's one area that may require sandpaper. Normally I can carve, you can carve wood to a finish, uh, which is better than you can often get with sandpaper, but this area down here, it's slightly rough. I probably will end up needing to use some very fine sandpaper to do it. And it would have to be sandpaper, not emery paper, even though emery paper is actually finer. But you get a black residue comes off emery paper, which colours the wood. Yeah, I'm fiddling with that. Right, so that's a bit better, is that wing membrane, membrane there. This one on the front now needs shaping. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to work on this wing. I know I said I don't like carving off the edge, but I kind of need to do it at this point here. So you'll see me, um, you can see me moving the chisel sideways because I'm actually using this more like a knife now rather than a chisel. Chisel you drive, a knife you slice. And I'm, I'm slicing this. That stops me pushing stuff off the edge, but it also helps with creating a really fine uh, shaving. I'm trying to work to here is Again, this membrane is taut between, or tautish, um, between the. Mm, between the um, the the uh, two arm bones, which means it's got to be in at least a straight um, a straight line between the two. Again, if you just landed, I suppose air pressure could be causing it to go in all sorts of directions, but we'll go with what looks okay. Okay, let's get rid of some of those bits from around that and some of the bits around here. Actually, we'll do it the easy way. Ah. Sorry if you're wearing a headset. <laughs> Actually, it shouldn't have been so bad. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm kind of not surprised. I mean, other than the physical um, physical rubbing together, um, it kind of doesn't surprise me because I mean, all, all all of the anodizing process does really is artificially rust the uh, the aluminium, and, and aluminium oxide is really hard. I mean, after all the Aluminium oxide is one of the things that they use for things like sandpaper and and uh, garnishing paper. So it's a really hard substance. Um, and then, of course, because it's full of tiny holes, they uh, they fill them with the dye. But oops! Mind you, I'm only broadcasting a one and a half megabit. Uh, well, it's peaking about one point seven megs with the audio. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the second one, but as I happen to have a handheld vacuum, <laughs> that's how I clean up after all the stream on, on a night. I, I generally pick this up, tip it out, and uh, do the same with the red, uh, with the, the blue non slip, but then I come over the desk with the vacuum. 
um, it's a heck of a lot easier now then um, I've sort of yeah I want to try this okay so looking a bit too close to the angle of my arm See if we can do some work to create a um, a body shape that I like the feel of. And I did use the right word there. Generally speaking, I, I find if it feels right, it often looks right. Not always, but sometimes, but most of the time. So this really is just, uh, the carry I'm doing here is really um, more about just helping me keep an idea as to where these um, hand bones are or wing bones are so that when I uh, carve downwards a little bit I've got uh, I've got a marker without having to draw everything back in I need to know roughly and approximately where they are because I'll actually just draw them uh, you know carve them in by by look as sort of as I am doing here and then try not to do what it did with the arm bone, of course. problem of you know whilst you should carve in from the outside of an edge the only actual problem with doing that is you quite often go deeper than you want it to or you can do if you're not careful so you do have to be you have to watch it when you do that as you can see I'm not I'm not even taking really big chunks with this gouge, but it does it will get through material very quickly. One of the nice things that you can do with gouges as well is it's, it's relatively easy because the because of the way the cutting edge is to actually just carve around corners as well carving a curve as long as you don't go too deep with it that is if you start um, if you start cutting on the sides at the same time then it, it really wants to go in a straight line and you don't stand much chance of uh, of it not but Now this wing really wants to go down quite a bit because uh, the body the body's got to be on the at the, uh, the same level I mean you can see the backbone there is is tilted slightly to the right with the backbone but essentially you're looking flat on him so the arms obviously going to join the body at the same side if I put the backbone over here for example then you could say he was leaning right over and then you'd you'd have a reason why this wing is a ring root here is a lot lower than this one, but I kind of like that curve where it is, so this is going to sort of go go in a bit more. Reminds me on Sky. Um, I haven't really looked at Skyrim. Do, does this look like a Skyrim uh, dragon, Irish lurker? And welcome to the uh, stream. Good evening. 
Irish Lurker, thank you also for following. That is most fantastic of you. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Um, they don't throttle, they just traffic manage. Because <laughs> you're on Virgin, I think, aren't you, uh, 3D, if I recall correctly? Um and on one of their tariffs they they say they don't yeah they don't they don't throttle I mean, there's a lot of um a lot of stories of them um, of uh, virgin throttling but that depends on the tariff i think that you're on but they they do like all providers traffic manage which is essentially the same thing Traffic management is done on a non-discriminatory basis, which means they slow everybody down. And of course, the people that are affected most are the ones that are using most of the whatever it is they're managing. I've been lucky; I haven't really ever noticed. Uh, Notice mine being managed in any way. Actually, f oh, I was going to say free. Actually, they um, manage the upload. Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to without a problem. Mind you, the um, it depends where you're measuring your speed as well. Uh, because of course modem well I, I don't know for Virgin but if it was an ADSL line um, sync speed is not the same as available bandwidth um, and it also depends on where you measure if you if you're measuring actually measuring a, a real transmission it then of course depends on where the the host is that's measuring the speed for you so you can get some really interesting results and there is all sorts of conspiracy theories on the internet about service providers who will um, prioritize traffic to speed test sites <laughs> and not others <laughs> whether that's true or not I don't know Uh, that's a wing membrane, but inside there is free space. Yeah, what's telling me don't cut in that direction, so I won't. I'm going this direction. Stay a little bit away from the body, give myself some free space and do what I said I wouldn't do and that is carve over the edge of the piece so I'm not fantastically bothered about this particular edge it's not too much of a problem to me but I do have to watch for wood split uh, can I come this way? yes I can I really should at this point change the uh, the clamp around a little bit but I'm kind of just on the edge of being able to carve in this area here I really must get around to get in a, a fast release clamp rather than this G clamp Oops. 
and that split some wood around there. Should give me a bit of room now to carve that wing bone down uh, and carve the body to match with it. So I'm going to try and keep, well, I'm intending to do now is carve this body and the wing at the, as the same same unit, and then I can shape like your shoulder if you like, um, and the the sides. So it looks like it joins. Get, I can get away with this side, as I say, because he's got his arm back, so you create like a crease just behind your shoulder. Um, and that's courtesy of all the other mistakes that I'm able to do that. I think I want to keep this wing fairly the wing bone if you like fairly flat but it will obviously curve curve around the tips and 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 around that sort of shape as well but basically trying to uh, to be fairly flat if i can wood grain around here is is tipping in that way and i can feel it wanting the chisel to rotate as I'm coming down this direction here so I probably should come across in this direction so I'm more across the grain now you'll see I'm driving off the edge and you see splinters here I don't know if you can see them but there's splinters there because I've pushed uh, fibres of wood over the edge. Again, I'm not fantastically bothered about it, but it is sort of, you know, what it's saying is you're carving it the wrong direction. Best way would be actually from probably from this side here. And immediately, uh, if I do it from this side here, uh, you can see it's shiny, whereas that's rough. That's shiny. You see, it's a different colour, but it is actually shiny, and that's the. Um, that means I'm, you know, that's the right direction. <laughs> Right, I'm going to be a bit careful around here. I don't drive the chisel into the head. I'm going to try and do the head separately. And they're actually joined by waste wood at this point. They will sort of separate a little bit as I carve down. Obviously because I'm going to leave the head where it is and carve the wing down so at least in just this area here I'm going to get a bit of separation. Um, whilst this dragon's got a neck ridge I may actually do away with that at some point. So I'm going to put a couple of... I don't, don't really want it too much in the way of stop cuts just around there because it is the edge of the wing bone and what I don't want to end up with is a sharp edge that I'm going to have to carve further down to, to create the curve to come up onto the wing bone like I've, I've done on here. Yep, 
equally I don't want to drive across and take a slice off at the top of the head at this stage either both would not be um, be my first choice of something to do Actually, especially these areas here, carving either off the edge or across it would would not be a good idea because they're very likely to split and break the whole the whole edge off. And actually, the grain's not too bad in this area here, which means I can carve on to the side quite nicely. which is helpful. Because what you've got with a with a piece of wood, generally speaking, if you if you take a trunk and slice it vertically and horizontally you know, along the, uh, across the length of it, they don't often go across wise, you know, take rings as the whole circular piece of the trunk. Out so they don't, you know, if you if that was your tree, they don't often cut downwards like that, they cut across and across that way. So, what you get is that the, the 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 grain generally runs all the way along a piece, you don't often get a circle in the middle like that. Um, if they're doing what they call blanks, which is a just a block of wood for. Uh, bowl carving then yes that's what they do they go vertically through the tree um, so things like this are actually um, branches where branches have come out the side of the trunk uh, and that's what's causing the the topology if you like of, of the rings and the, the uh, grain of the wood in this sort of area and it's changing quite rapidly around here because that's that's the core of, of a group of rings that from the branch. So quite literally grains going this way here and grains going that so it's going this way and that way in this area because of that that loop there. That ch change of direction sometimes can be challenging to uh, to carve around and one of the answers to having a challenging area is a sharp blade really helps a lot Again, yes, I'm cutting towards myself, but I'm driving this with my fingers, not my arm. So I mean, a little. There's little risk of me hurting myself with the chisel. And there is a little bit of a risk of me hurting myself with the fact that I've had stitches removed today, but not much. They, um, the wounds have healed quite nicely. is one of those areas where trying to come in from the side is causing the wood and you can see sort of I don't know if you can see it but it's starting to break off and break 
it's trying to crack all the way down here so I'm gonna to have to carve this way on this edge and we got to lift off that big piece And at that point, the wood disappears in the opposite direction, and I've got to carve that way. Is it that way or this way? This way. If you study the wood close enough, you actually you can generally see it, but sometimes it requires either a bit of memory or sometimes it, you know, it doesn't matter. But you know, again, cracking pieces of wood off. Should be okay. Simply Tam, thank you very much for following the studio this evening. That is most excellent of you. Thank you very much for that. Glad that you're enjoying what you're looking at. I would be interested if you feel like chatting in, uh, you know, if you are. Uh, a streamer yourself or you also undertake any form of arts or crafts um, and you may not realize of course because I suspect um, you, know, you may not have seen uh, me for too long but this um, whilst I'm carving at the moment um, I know below the stream window it says I've got a short, short attention span. That's not actually true. I just like a lot of variety. So I do do I do do other things as well. I don't only carve. I do pyrography. I do uh, an art form called scraperboard. I also do um, a craft called punch craft. And. Um, one or two other things that might creep into the, the stream now and again. Not so long ago we made a, a quad helicopter on stream. But those are um, those sorts of things only happen rarely I'm afraid. I can't afford to keep buying them just to build. Not that I bought that one to uh, to build on stream. It just happened to be one I've, uh, I've been meaning to build for over a year. enjoy the um, sound of wood being cut hopefully you can hear this yeah, thank you very much um, I'm glad you think it's uh, gorgeous we've I've made enough mistakes on it so far <laughs> and had to fix them but uh, thank you for that um, you say you've no patience for it yourself. Have you tried it, or do you just feel that you wouldn't have the patience for it? <coughs> Excuse me, because uh, I kind of know a uh, you know a lot of people have said things like that, and um, it's actually strange, you know, um, from that perspective, because I ca I can personally I can be very patient with things, but I don't actually find I need patience when I'm carving. Um, because what's happening is something's always happening when you're carving. You know, if I put the chisel in here and do that, a piece of wood comes off. So something's always happening. I find a neat patience when something isn't going right. Um, so Eddie Fall guy, for example, who is around, makes uh, chain mail jewellery, and I tried doing some of that. And when I kept dropping the ring, or you know, it was going through 
it, you know, it was, I was trying to thread it through something that just didn't want to let it through or uh, I'd thread it through and drop it and it'd fall out and I'd pick it up. That's when I needed patience because something wasn't happening. It was, you know, I was trying to do something and I was failing and that's that's when I need, I find I need patience doing all these sorts of crafts. Uh, and so wood, wood carving generally where something is always happening as soon as you put your chisel in, something happens. Might not be what you want it to happen, but something does happen. So I don't find, um, I don't actually find patience is a requirement for it, to be honest. Of course, on the other hand, if you've tried it <laughs> and you say that, then fine. Can't argue with experience. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. I I don't know if that's what you if it's what you were doing, but I do. I suspect that um, it it yeah, it's it's not going as fast as you like, and therefore you do go deeper than than you intend it to do. Um, some of that can be alleviated. Uh. One of the ways is kind of how I started this one and that because I wasn't quite sure the shape or the depth that I wanted. So right at the start, once I've carved the blank out and that is deep, so, you know, it's quite all right just to have a good go with a chisel at that. Um, is to start carving it right at the start. Swagger dude 2345. Thank you for following the studio. That is excellent of you as well. Thank you for doing that. And we're going to get another one in a moment. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, uh, Schizo MC, thank you also for following the studio. And I too think you are fantastic for doing that. Thank you very much. Um, so, we'll see. yeah, so if you start at the top, you kind of like I've done here, if you like, this wing, I've started to, to cut the membranes. So I've started to define the shape, but this is way too high in the wood. But what I'll do is I'll cut some down, I'll put these shapes back in, then I'll cut some more down and I'll keep doing that. So you start to see the shape that you want before you get too deep into it and ruin your shape basically. So that's that's kind of one way because you start to define your shape early on and it kind of keeps you, helps to keep you from getting impatient with it not going fast enough because you're actually seeing results um, and that can that can actually help quite a bit uh, in, do, in doing that um, sometimes as I you if you've been watching this stream for a little bit tonight you'll say you'll have seen me stop and change direction because the chisel and I, I think around here if I, if I if I start to cut into the wood here at this point here the grain of the wood is actually trying to twist my chisel like that. If I come at it from this angle here, uh, what the grain of the wood is trying to do now is drive my chisel into the wood, downwards, uh, which of course will then make it go deeper than I want it to go. Um, so, you know, if you like, and, and I describe it as listening to the wood, the wood is helping you. So in that particular case, what I need to do is come and carve from the opposite side and then the grain is actually trying to push my chisel out of the wood and they can't go too deep so that's one um, one way uh, that might help but relearning also how to draw and make soap oh interesting caustic um, caustic soda isn't it with soap it's it's amazing how kind of dangerous chemicals can make uh, make soap you can carve soap as well by the way and of course, if um doesn't work too well, you just throw it back into the pot and recast it. <laughs> it's up stripper, good evening, welcome. That's alright, you don't have to chat. You know, you're quite welcome to just lurk in stream as I keep saying it's I do that a lot, so if I'm gonna do it I can't complain at other people doing it. Right, 
let's put some more of these uh, these shapes back in here. Also, um, simply tan. I was going to say one way. I don't know what sort of chisels you were using. If you use hand chisels rather than um, uh, the longer chisels that you can use a mallet on, um, it's harder to put force into them. So it's it's kind of harder to go too deep as well. Chemistry for the way. Yeah. I think it. I, I find it's fascinating in a way, you know, how you, as I say, you change things like caustic soda, which you wouldn't want to put your hands anywhere near, into something that you're going to rub all over your skin. Okay, these are just indicator marks, really, um, just to help me keep an idea where the wing bones are. Uh, or the arm, you know, the hand down, uh, wing bones are meant to be. I could, I could get a pencil out and redraw them, but then again, in a you know, couple of minutes, those marks will get carved off. So, it's just a just a guide as i say once um, this one's a bit more curved and it just helps me view it i mean on this one i've carved it off off smooth uh, and i've just at this stage just drawn uh, some dotted lines just to help me judge where they're going to be because i need to carve between them and create the, the actual bones um, because they are sort of prominent uh, in the skin um, you can sort of see it in the reference image, but it's a bit it's a bit small to do it to see that, but and there is um, there is another uh, wing uh, there's a bone comes down here and there's another one just goes around the edge there as well. But uh, I can't exactly uh, cut that one in at the moment. Potato Zard ninety three. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for following. That is uh, most fantastic of you, and I'm glad you're enjoying what you're looking at. Yep, that's true. But I mean, all this stuff that I get here, um, you know, makes good hamster, be ham hamster bedding. Um, you mm, could use it as kindling at the, uh, you know, at the um, worst, I guess. But otherwise, it's just a waste product. Whatever you carve off soap, you just throw back into the container and turn it into something new. Yeah. Uh, it's only this stuff, by the way, is only uh, five pound a bag. <laughs> if you want some. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little bit of a joke that uh, free hopefully recognised from the other night. Uh, Okay, simply tan. No problem with that, and hopefully, you know, it, it is interesting because that's the idea is to sort of just help and explain what it is I'm doing. So, you know, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome to uh, drop in. I generally start streaming. Um, by the way, free. You have a ten minute warning, sir. Um, I generally start streaming about two hours ago. Uh, if you feel like uh, you want to drop in. Yeah, because there's plenty of air in it, so it makes good uh, good kindling, and it is well, it's relatively dry wood. Unfortunately, I don't uh, I don't really make enough of it to uh, to give it to anybody. Oh, I, <laughs> I suppose the ideal bit is you don't make enough of it. <laughs> It's, um, it's a bit of a weird thing. I hate wasting material, but I don't actually feel like this is wasting material. I'm not quite sure <laughs> how I sort of somehow reconcile those two, because this is more waste material than uh, I don't know um, a little bit of extra um, cotton that I use in the um, in the punch craft. And yet, you know, um, I'll actually in some cases, I'll, I'll I'll use about three inches of thread in order to save an inch of thread. 
because sometimes you used to get extra stitches in to get to another place where it would actually be a lot cheaper in material to cut it off and start again but oh dear I'm kind of weird like that I guess So the starting of fires, is it starting with a match <laughs> and doing it the easy way or is it um, flint and steel or, um, or a fire bow? Okay, well, because I, I do stream seven, generally speaking, seven nights a week because I enjoy the hobbies that I'm doing. And uh, I might as well show you guys at the same time because I enjoy actually you guys interacting and just showing and explaining things. Uh, I will, however, just mention that um, uh, I may not be any streams for the next couple of weeks after Monday of next week. Just because I'm going to be away without internet access. Your graphics tab. Driver cannot be found, even though you've just reinstalled it. Oh, that's weird. Is that? Is it? Um... A Wacom uh, tablet uh, AD, or is it another uh, another kind? Mind you, I'm guessing it's been recon uh, I was about to say it's been recognised by the operating system because that's the only way you get that message. But it might not be identifying itself. Hmm. Oh, uh, what it might well, what might be worth doing is. Um, going to say going into the device manager and actually um, deleting the driver from there but you possibly can't find it I fluff from a tumble dryer yeah that was that's good stuff <laughs> magic smoke and mirrors <laughs> yeah what's that over there click <laughs> yeah okay that's weird um no, I was gonna say, the uh, the the um. You are you doing it wireless? Or are you doing it with a with a cable? Uh, I don't know which graphics tablet you've got. Whether you've got one of the bamboo type ones or when you've got one of the um. The more professional ones. I say professional, the more expensive ones really, because the 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 bamboo ones are damn decent tablets as well. Into us. They're the ones I was trying to think of. Just carve that down a bit. USB cable. Okay. Wimp of light. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's something. There's something to be said, though, isn't there, for uh, actually um, being able to create fire by some means other than a dirty great big lighter. Oh, dirty small lighter. It's like I always used to. I always used to like setting newspaper on fire with a magnifying glass. I 
that's when you learn that um, the white bit of the paper didn't didn't smoke the black bits did and you to use the black bits and you know keep the magnifying glass moving once it started to uh, to smoke in order to try and get the thing to set on fire of course the teachers never liked it when you were set out on the, the steps of the school doing it but it's good fun at the time and you these days half the half the kids that are of cub age probably are already smoking um like a mini blow torch flame yeah so the lighter kind of goes what were you saying about uh wet wood <laughs> uh unfortunately yeah uh, simply tan i'll be stopping within about half an hour um, but thank you uh, for that. I will be on again tomorrow night from, I say, from about two hours ago. Well, you may even catch me in the afternoon. Um, I'm in the UK, so it's possible I could uh, I could be on again in uh, uh, what's mass in about sixteen hours. Oh yes, this bit of the wood around here is. Talking of soap carving, it's a bit like that. Just this area of wood around here is is sort of well, best I can describe it is is carving carving like soap. Right, let's put a bit of the backbone in the U-shaped gouge. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Okay, so I uh, simply tell I probably will have finished by the time you get back. But uh, have a safe journey. And I'll uh, hope to see you again maybe tomorrow. So I want to keep the transition from the back uh, to the backbone, a, cur you know, a curve if you like. Uh, I may go in with a slightly sharper chisel at some point, but at this stage, this one is, uh, I'll do the job just fine. If the, uh, if the curve is too shallow, so I, can, I can sharpen it up with a finer one later. It's, a, it's really early in, early on that establishing this sort of curved shape because you know this wing has got to go quite a bit lower but I really am not wanting to make another mistake so I'm establishing the shapes now that way I'll see them more sooner and I suspect that chortle I just heard was um, 3D bloke going live So if anybody is um, here, is you know, trying to give it, giving people an excuse to leave my stream. But if anybody's interested in airbrushing, uh, I suspect 3D bloke who was in chat a moment ago has uh, has just gone live, and he's doing uh, some airbrushing tonight, some colour work. He's doing some abstract or more abstract work, shall we say? I think he's got a theme for it. Um, I actually don't recall quite what he said earlier on today. Um, but, um, I mean, for example, one piece he recently completed, which was somewhat abstract, was um, in, he called it Insomnia, mainly because the original was um, done at something like three or four o'clock in the morning when he got up because he couldn't sleep. Um, and it kind of looked like a pair of eyes that would, you know, you wouldn't 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 close almost, you know, that sort of uh, I'm sleepy but I can't go to sleep look.
In case you're looking at this and think and were thinking about the backbone is sort of an odd shape around there. Don't forget what it is is the backbone. The dragon's got his head twisted back and and leaning so sort of leaning back towards you if you like. So the backbone has kind of got to follow the neck to join the back of the head somewhere around it. Obviously it's middle just like yours. So that's that's why they there's a curve on it there. I was just thinking, I wish I wish I actually knew what I was doing with this. <laughs> I've never carved a dragon before. This is the first time. It's actually one of the first times I've done a piece this big. I have done a piece larger than this but was on was on smaller board and it was actually a simpler design. It was uh, two hearts and a ribbon uh, with some wasn't pyro it, it, they, there was some writing on it. It wasn't done with pyrography, but it was done with a high-speed uh, dental drill, uh, a long taper bit, which when you put it into the wood, it, it cuts very easily, but because of the speed, it actually charles the wood. So you got lettering, which was quite nice. That was for an anniversary gift. So this is kind of one of the largest pieces I've done. That was actually done on pine as well was that one, which provides its own interesting challenges. In this particular case, this wood and this piece is actually easier to carve than those, uh, that other one was, even though this has got some really tight spaces and um, there's a lot of wood coming off of it. Right, at that point I've reached the bottom of the waist. So um, when I carved around the head and the, the wing initially, this area that's in uh, here, just around the neck, that's the wing edge there. This is waste wood, but as you can see, this is very tight, so you can't couldn't actually get in there with a with a fine chisel enough to get very much of it out. And ultimately, I may have to go in there with a rotary tool. Maybe about the only place on here that I will, but we'll see. Uh, just to uh, to get rid of it. Um, but just at this point here on the back of the head, it's really close to the wing. And I've just reached, I've just reached that level. So what I'm going to need to do, and this is why I may actually lose uh, that ridge off the back of the dragon's head. By lose, I mean actually cut it off as opposed to accidentally break it. But just to give me space to get between. Right, this needs sharpening. Okay, I'm going to go on for a little bit longer. Just keeping an eye on the clock.
turn it over and they've got a little tiny former there just to remove the burr. And now we'll see if we can cut in here again. There we go, it's a lot better now. It's a really awkward place to get in, so. I think maybe tomorrow afternoon, we'll see how the things go, but tomorrow afternoon you may actually um, see me get the micro motor out and we'll uh, we'll get in there with a, with a dental drill and clear some of that wood out. Um, it'll be a bit more dusty than, uh, than using a hand chisel. Uh, but it will be a heck of a lot easier although there's uh, there is a bit more chance of you know the the uh, micro motor and the the bit i'm using going somewhere i don't want it to go because it does cut wood very easily but um we may just do it to get in there and get rid of it rather than spending hours sort of trying to dig it out um, and using sort of combinations of chisels to create, try and create a sh loose, loose enough wood that it, the chisels will take it out. just dug down enough there just to clear that enough for me at the moment one of these days I'll actually go and I'll actually buy another handle I think because generally speaking, I tend to use two chisels a lot most of the time, and then occasionally you'll use a third one. Um, so it would be a heck of a lot easier just to have two handles for the chisels I'm using most, and then uh, just swap them out if I need to. thinking leaving such a tiny space and I was using a rough outline from the uh, from the reference image but uh, I should have thought about this a lot more but Every piece that you carve, every piece that you draw, you know, is an opportunity to learn something new about whatever it is you're doing. And I've just learned something new about um, carving. Don't leave yourself tiny spaces. There we go anyway. Um, let's do a little bit more of this, but we are now getting towards the end for this evening. I'm glad I've got some donuts to have because my wife actually, who was out when I'm uh, early on tonight, has just made a tea, and I can smell it. And it smells quite nice. I had enough for mine, but you know what it is when you smell something nice, it makes you feel hungry. So I'm glad I've got some cream buns.
still on there, dear. Right. I was just about to show you the effects of, uh, of cutting against the grain, but it because um, I got enough water here to do it, but it actually um, snapped off. So because what would have happened if I'd lifted the wood a bit more, it would have cracked across and possibly all the way to as far as here. Uh, but it actually broke, so I couldn't do that, I'm afraid. Don't want to induce it on purpose, but there was an opportunity there just to show you. But that's the unpredictability of, of the wood. Can't rely on it breaking off like it did. It could well have um, cracked all the way across. So at this stage, though, it's, it's we're high up in the carve. Um, so it wouldn't have been a significant uh, problem. There we go. There's one that's I lifted it off and it's just cracked all the way across to here. I've now got rough wood there. And this one, if I try pulling, it would probably do the same thing. Yeah. It's it's pulled across, and that's why you don't pull the chips off. Um, because the wood it just literally pulls across. Do have to, well potentially would have to be careful about here is the because the grain comes up where I'm carving there there's a tendency for this edge to be higher than where I'm carving because I literally come up into it it's it's forcing me that way and uh, if you're trying to make this flat to the edge that's something you should bear in mind it can be quite because if you keep doing it you just keep digging yourself deeper um, you kind of have to uh, come at it from a different angle in order to get rid of that uh, raised edge. And that, which is what I've just done there. Just that little bit was enough to do that. Uh, tell you what, it's now... What is it now? Quarter past ten. I think that will do for this evening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put away my chisels. I'm going to put them to bed. Tuck them up. Nice and warm in their case, which will keep them nice and safe overnight. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but I'm half serious. I have put them away in a case. Like this. Which does hold them. Uh, what it does, it stops them from banging against each other, uh, or stops the tips at least from banging against each other. And the tips, if they're going to dig into anything, dig into the leather, which of course will give. It will, you know, slightly cut, which means that the tips don't get damaged, uh, or the sharp edges don't get damaged. So definitely worth, if you have chisels, investing in um, something like this, some sort of kit, bag. Uh, or tool roll rather um, to keep them in rather than just throwing them all into a box or something where they rattle around loose because that's where they you knock the sharp edges off them basically so as you've just gathered of course I am packing up uh, what I want to do is say thank you very much to everybody that's been watching me this evening it has been an amazing and Wonderful time having you around. I do enjoy it. Hope you have done so too. Of course, if you have enjoyed it and you would like to come back, um, then you know, please push that follow button. Um, I'd quite like that if you would, but you know, that way Twitch will uh, will tell you when I go live, so you get to get the advantage of knowing that. Um, of course, Twitch can be a little twitchy uh, and it may not uh, may not tell you so if you would like to you can also follow me on Twitter the uh, uh, what do you call it the account 
I don't know the name on Twitter at Zevaganart. Details are down below the stream window, um, and there's a tweet goes out when I go live, and that's about the only tweet that ever goes out uh, is is when I go live. So you're not going to be inundated if you want to do that. On the other hand, if you just want to drop in uh, at any time, you're quite welcome to do so. My normal streaming times are two hours a day from 8 p.m. or thereabouts in the UK. Uh, that's 1900 hours GMT. And if you can't be bothered um, asking Google what that is in your own local time zone, if you take a look at the clock right now, note what the time is take off two and a quarter hours if you do that that will be the time that I start streaming normally uh, currently as I say doing that seven nights a week although uh, there will be no streams from Tuesday of next week possibly Monday as well I'm not sure but from Tuesday of next week there'll be no streams for about uh, a couple of weeks as I won't be at home and therefore I won't be able to stream you may, however, get a couple of bonus streams this weekend in the UK in the afternoon, um, but uh, I don't know when or if that will be, so that will also depend on just what's going on, like the weather and what the family is doing, etc. Yeah, as I say, in the meantime, thank you all for watching. Have a good evening. If you'd like to um, follow some other people that have been in stream, 84 Guy makes chain mail jewellery. Excellent suggest you check him out. Uh, 3D Bloke uh, is an airbrush artist. He should be live now and in fact what I will do uh, at the end of my stream here I will host 3D Bloke so if you um, if you want to see him stealthily if you like just keep watching my stream here and then uh, uh, it should pop up after the uh, after the end credits Yep, he is streaming. Um, but if but if you want to chat, don't forget you'll need to hop over into his uh, into his stream in order to do that. Have a good night, everybody, and thank you very much.